What's going on guys, Liam here and it is Magic Round Wrap Up, Round 10 of the 2023 NRL season. And it lived up to the name, man, it was a pretty magic round. There was I was highly entertained through the whole weekend and um, yeah, there was upsets, close games, everything except for, we didn't have a golden point, did we? No, we had a couple of closes though, but yeah, really good, uh, really good round of footy, so... Uh, for anyone that hasn't watched these videos, I do a recap every after the final game of the round. Obviously, teamless Tuesdays and um, a prediction or just you know a preview for the uh, games that are coming up. So make sure you're subbed if you're not already. So close to hitting a thousand subs, guys. So help me out, help me out, man. Let's get it done. Let's get this done this week. We'll see how we go. See if we're at a thousand by the end of the week. All right. Now, um, man, there was some. The comp is so tight at the moment. Um, I, actually, let's just go through each game individually first. Then we'll have a look at the ladder. Then we'll go into each game individually and, um, you know, talk about standouts and, you know, how teams are going and stuff like that as well. Um, man, we I was killing it this round as far as the tips and picks and punts and stuff go. But today got railed. Obviously, a few upsets today and stuff and got absolutely slaughtered today. Ruined everything. Today ruined everything. I was so pissed off. I was sitting there all smug because I, you know, tipped a few ones that I didn't. You know, no one else really did, and they got up and stuff. And then my bloody safe ones failed on the last day. So anyway, it happens. All right, Raiders doggies. This is a good game. So actually, in my tip video, I tipped the Raiders. But uh, when I was, uh, I had actually put down doggies with a six and a half point head start. So um, would have come good as well. So I won twice here. So. You know, that's pretty good when you when you win twice on your first bet. That's pretty dope. Um, all right, so Sea Eagles Brisbane. We have Brisbane thirteen plus here. Brisbane looked great. Heaps better with Payne and Man back. Um, Panthers got up over the Waz. Uh, Sharkies slaughtered, absolutely humped by the uh, by the Dolphins. Uh, Melbourne Storm Rabbitohs, man. I actually had Storm in this one terribly. Um, I didn't have any money on it or anything, but I was way too, uh, way too close to sort of pick. Uh, I, I definitely thought Rabbitohs, you know, were had been the better team lately. But I just I had a feeling Storm were going to get this one, and they they proved me wrong. Tigers, we had them. They got up against the Dragons, um, and then today where it all fell apart. Cowboys humping the Roosters, and uh, I can't wait to talk about that game. It was bloody hell. And then close one too, right down to the wire, twenty six to twenty four Eels Titans and the Knights chilling in Bali, watching everyone else have some fun and magic around. Uh, a lot to talk about there too, I guess. So let's have a look at the ladder now. Brisbane still flying high, two ahead of the Rabbitohs, and then we just got this log jam of twelve all the way down to ninth, uh, which is pretty damn crazy. So. Man, you drop a couple of games, you can fall out real quick. Um, sea Eagles, I think they were second or maybe third last week. Or they were, or maybe that was the week before. So it shows how quickly, maybe it was two weeks ago, Sea Eagles were sitting second. Shows how quickly you can fall down. A couple of losses, can, you can drop out real quick. And then we've got 10, 11, then a whole bunch on eight here as well. So it's, uh, she's tight. Parramatta obviously just losing. They would have probably pushed up into this eight here as well because they're do still have a pretty good for and against, considered they've lost more games than they've won. And then uh, Cowboys shooting up off the bottom as well. And Dragons and West Tigers, man, they just... I said this might be Battle of the Spoon, and it's looking like it might have been. So, so good to see the Tigers get a win, though, man. Super proud of them. They really stood up. All right, let's go into this. So I was... I watched half this game at the game. I was actually... Went to Magic Round. And, um, and then watch the second half. Shot down the pub real quick and watch the second half. Um, it was a pretty good game. It went exactly how I thought it was going to. I thought Raiders were sort of going to be out in front the whole way, but just keep the doggies in it close enough. That'll be a close game. <laughs> Literally exactly what I said sort of thing. Uh, it was good to see Savage back. Um, got a try as well. Um, good to see... Um, oh, let's just go to team list first. Um, but let's have a quick look at the stats. So... Dominated completions, dominate time in possession, really good completion rate. You know, won the ruck, run the run meters, uh, won the post contact. So, really dominant. They're just there's something missing on their defense where they can't seem to stop stop <laughs> um, stop teams from scoring. And um, you're gonna have to tidy that up if they want to uh, continue to push up into that top eight. But 
pretty good performance from them. I, like I said from the start, I was one of the few people when I put Raiders in my te- in my top eight for the year. Everyone was like, "What are you doing? They're gonna they're not gonna be close." And I was like, "Man, they've got a team. I'm telling you, man." And a couple a couple things to fix and de- fix in defence, and they're they're gonna be right in there, um, sort of thing. So. Whitehead was great. Um, Xavier Savage was great to see him back. Um, man, I'm really loving Preston. He's been so good. And, um, yeah, it was really, really good performances. Uh, Reid Marnie was better. And um, Joshy had a pretty good game too. But, yeah, they're just still lacking a bit in the middle. Uh, doing the best they can with what they got. Um, Olapo was pretty damn good. It was good to see Frank and Pele back too. He's a monster. Absolute monster. And uh, who else was good? Tarpany was great. I thought Zach Wolford was actually pretty damn good. And uh, yeah, it was good. Just really, hopefully they can put Savage back at this fullback because I really do think he's a genuine fullback. Because Sebastian Chris has done such a good job and should be super proud. But I don't think he's a genuine fullback. Well, I just think he's a better centre. I think he did such a good job at fullback. But um, Savage is a savage. All right. Oh, Seagulls, Broncos, absolute humping. Um, I mean... 77th minute, first try. Um, they were absolutely gone by then. Uh, it was this was yeah this was uh this was pretty pretty bad. Now there wasn't um Broncos completed, but look at this. This is just I said it before. Manly was second a couple of weeks ago, maybe three at the lo- longest. Like they they were flying high, and I was sitting there going, God damn, if this team stays healthy, they're going to be a problem. And then all of a sudden, it's just drama, drama. This in 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 club drama stuff just seems to eat this team up every every year. Um, but yeah, Broncos dominating here. Plenty of post contact. Payne obviously would have contributed to a lot of this. He was really good. Um, average set distance pretty similar. So the Broncos forwards didn't really dominate them a whole heap. Um, but uh, where's the errors? Uh, tackles made. Six three four errors. Sixteen to twelve. So they made a few more errors. Penalties conceded. Broncos would want to tidy, tidy that up a little bit. Um, but, yeah, Broncos were pretty damn good. Um, Kate Well was pretty good. Reese Walsh, shaky start. Um, and I wanted to just go into this at the moment. I don't like talking about picking origin teams and stuff like this, but there has been a lot of debate. If Ponga doesn't get the nod, um, sh- who should sort of get the, the back spot? And um, Hammer or Reese Walsh? Now, for me... Oh, I'm. I've just been so impressed with Hammer. Like Reese Walsh looks beat. Like he looks so dangerous every time he gets the ball. But man, his errors are starting to creep up there, man. Like, and if we have a look at the stat, error stats for the year, I mean, you got Selwyn Cobbo who's going to make the team, and he's got 21. Then you got Reese Walsh in here. They're both getting over two errors a game. I don't know if you want your back three to be the two leading error getters in the league sort of thing. And if we let's see how far we have to go down before we find Hammer. So still going, still going. There he is, forty fifth, ten games, nine errors. Um, so less than an error a game. Reese Walsh nearly at two a game. Selwyn Cobbo at well over two a game. So I, I I'm just. The reason why Teddy is considered the best fullback in the game, in my opinion, is consistency. Like he never has bad, like games where he gets two errors. You know what I mean? He, 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 everyone gets errors, but you know what I mean. It's just it's very very rare. Can't even find him. He's not in the top fifty, is he? Yeah, there you go. Not even in the top fifty for errors, and he catches the ball every single time. It is nuts. So. That, that's my personal opinion, just a short take on that one. I'll do another take, like a bit more, I'll do a bit more in-depth take on this, probably on my TikTok as well, if you want to check that out when I do it. But yeah, for me, that's just too, like way too many errors for both. Like you, you have, one of these guys obviously have to be in, and I think Selwyn will keep his spot on the wing. But yeah, I don't know if you want two top error getters in your, in your team, but I'm loving what Hammerso is doing. He's so good. And his positional play is great too, so... Um, but yeah, congratulations to Broncos. Absolutely killed it. Um, who was good here? Broncos, I mean, I was pretty disappointed with their whole back line, except for Cherry Evans. Paseca was good in his second stint, as always. Um, Aloye was just terrible, man. Um, Paddy Carrigan was good. He's so much better when Payne's in the team. I didn't actually... Someone only punt... No, um, I kept... Because I saw Paddy Carrigan down the shops. He must live close by to me, and um, he's tiny. And um, I was like, how's this guy just continually pump meters so easily? 
And then someone pointed out to me, he goes, it's because he always runs after Payne Haas and he attracts like four people. I was like, oh, now I've noticed it. I'm like, oh, he does. He does. <laughs> you know, so, uh, obviously, his metres were well down last week and Payne Haas comes back and he looks like a different animal. He actually noticed last week he was um, almost pushing passes and stuff. He didn't look comfortable or as comfortable when uh, Payne's there sort of thing. So they definitely obviously worked really well together. But I'm telling you now, Joshy Reynolds, oh, Adam Reynolds, sorry, He's just, I, I was chatting to someone about it at, um, at Magic Ground and um, it's, it's, his career's been so weird. It's like normally someone bursts onto the scene and they're really good and peak and then they'll trail off or they'll be in the league for a little bit and then they'll spike up and then he just gets a little bit better every year. Like I haven't never seen uh, Adam Reynolds' game like jump. Like he's just so much better this year. Like he's just... He came to the league pretty good, then he got a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better. And just every year, it's just a little bit better. It's just bloody mind-blowing to me. He's, I think he's literally playing the best he's ever played, and he's won premierships and stuff. It's, he's so damn good, man. I thought Selwyn Cobo was running the ball really hard, so was Staggs, Jesse Arthurs. I'm telling you now, and I, I said this on a TikTok video as well, I, I'd leave Jesse Arthurs in the team. I think Corey Oates, I'm telling you now, if Corey Oates was in this team, he'd be up in this top 10 as well. He does have bad hands. Just He just does. I love him. He's a good player. Kick return meters. He runs good lines. Like he does a lot of other really good stuff. But Jesse Arthurs just doesn't make errors, man. Like Jesse, Let's see if Jesse Arthurs... They, they've been kicking a Jesse Arthurs a lot on purpose. Every single team has. And let's see if he's in here. So, in the top 50... No. So I, I actually think Jesse Arthurs has to stay in this team. Um, he's a he's a bloody gun. He's really, really good. Yeah, he doesn't give you the big run meters like Corey Oates, but I'd take someone knowing someone's not going to drop the ball out the back any day of the week over a few extra meters on a kick return. All right, Warriors-Panthers. Um, we had Panthers here. Um, Warriors? I said this before. This was a good loss for a Warriors fan. <laughs> and um, I was chatting to a couple of Warriors fans about this, and I was saying, this year's a bit different. You can actually be proud of your losses. Like, so there's some losses you can be like, you know what, we gave it everything. We got a bad call or two. You know, a couple of the ball didn't quite bounce our way, but we were in it right till the 80th minute. You know what I mean? You walk off, the, you walk off there proud. And this is another one of those, um, you know, Penrith... Defended so well. That's why they won the game, really. Um, and just, yeah, it was just it was just a really good performance for the Warriors. And um, I said it before, they've got a bit of a, you know what I mean? They've fallen out of the eight now, have they? Yeah, they've fallen down to 11th. But if they just, they're going to get some wins over Origin time because they're not going to lose any players to Origin. And they, and then they can then they can go on their run. I, I, could, I really can see them making a good run through here up into this top four tops, you know, eight, nine, yeah, sorry, eight, seven, six, five spot. If they um, really put a solid performance, go home, get some rest. They've had three games in 11 days. They have to go home and then travel back to Australia now. So fingers crossed they can uh, rest up, recover, chalk up a couple wins over the next few games. And I think they're going to be well and truly in it. So good on the Warriors, man. They definitely hung in there. They would have lost this game by 30 a couple of years ago. So really good to see. I mean, they're complete. They're still complete. They match it. Like they're completing well over eighty percent for the year. You know they match the Penrith Panthers, who have been the benchmark completion rates in the last couple of years. Um, you know, just start a little bit of ball. Um, just look at those run meters from the Panthers. They'll just tell you this team with Fisher Harrison on the backs. Just <laughs> it's good. Plenty of post contact. Eight to six in the line breaks. Uh, Forty seven to fifty nine tackle breaks. So it's just, you know. Pretty solid from both teams, to be fair. And look at that. They, they play the ball speed was so fast as well. That's brilliant. That's so quick. If you can get this close to three seconds, you're playing the ball quick. That's very quick normally, and they, they were faster. So um, kick in, defense, um, 81 to 84. So they, they need to work on that a little bit. Um, but Panthers are a very hard team to handle. And then they had less errors than the Panthers. So, you know, plenty of positives to take out of this from the Warriors. Um and uh, cool start. He's brilliant out the back. He's super underrated as fullback. Um, Dallin was brilliant as well. Marcelo Matoya was oh, brilliant, man. He's he, like I've said it before. He's becoming one of my favourite players, man. He's he's beast. 
Uh, of course, he was on one leg and then eventually came off, but super brave uh, beast. This matchup between Cleary and Sean Johnson was just so good. They were both so good, man. You just, man, we're blessed this year with the seven play, man. We're, uh, you know, Reynolds, Sean Johnson, Cleary, Heinze. It's just Mitchell Moses playing pretty good. Um, you know, there's f- some quality sevens around at the moment. Uh, Fisher Harris and um, Moses Leota were brilliant. I thought Fanua Blake's first stint was awesome. This Jackson Ford dude, too, eh? I'm fi- he's super underrated. He's really good. He's really, really good. And uh, Wade Egan was pretty damn solid as well. And uh, Cur- Curran came on and did a good, good job too. Now, there's a couple dodgy refing things here, and I don't really like to get into them. I just like to talk footy. I feel like all the other podcasts and footy shows just talk about refing and bad calls and all this sort of stuff. But there was one where Lotelli had to go up for a HIA because he got brushed across the face. Just my personal opinion on this. If you get brushed across the face, just get up and play the ball and you won't get sent off for the HIA. You know what I mean? Like, if you, to me, like, if you're going to stay down to try and milk a penalty because you got, like, brushed across the face, I've always said I think anyone that stays down should have to go off because if you, if you genuinely can't get up, like, if you, if you get hit so hard you can't get up, probably need to go to hospital man like let alone keep playing footy you know what i mean so like if you if if you get brushed across the face just get up and you won't get sent off for a HIA that's my personal opinion on it i know a lot of warriors fans were mad and i'm not singling out dallin brilliant game i'm not singling out warriors it was just i, I it was just got brought up in this one um if you, if you don't stay down you won't get sent off for a HIA and that's that's a simple one sort of thing so it's sh- terrible call. He got brushed fingers across his mouth, and he he got sent off for a HIA. But um, yeah, if you don't if you don't stay down, you don't get a HIA. It's pretty basic. Um, man, dolphins. So everyone had the sharkies, including me. But I didn't have them in any of my bets, thank God. Um, but yeah, it was just this was just dolphin. Probably the best game I've seen them play. Like that. This is the first. Not most of the games they've won this year. I think this is the best win. Most of the games they won this year, the other teams looked better, and they've just hung around. They've just hung around. They've just hung around, and because they've completed so high, because they just take every chance they possibly get, they get over the line. They completely shut out the Tigers and uh, Tigers, the Sharkies in this one. They smacked them. They were bashing them in defense. They looked quicker. They looked faster. They looked. Their passing was crisper. They dead set, just outplayed one of the hottest teams in the comp. So this, for me, was their best win by a mile. A lot of their wins, I've been... I don't, I don't bag them, but I was like, they got pretty lucky there. Not lucky, they were just like... All they did was hang around, and then, you know, they got, they got a tr- late try to sort of uh, steal the game or something like that. But this was the first time I'd have seen them hump a team, and they, they humped one of the hottest teams. So uh, really good from the Dragons. So, uh, Jesus, I'm on fire today. <laughs> the Dolphins. So let's have a look at the team stats. One possession. Look at that. Absolutely crushed them. Crushed them in time and possession. Crushed them on completion rates. Um, Jeez, that, that's surprising. So they ran for less metres, but plenty more post-contact. Um, obviously, a lot of these could have been on kick returns. Um, average set distance, 43 to 38. Damn. Okay. And the fast play the ball speed. Wow, this these these are very. I don't check these stats before I, I go live for your eh? So uh, sometimes I'm a little bit shocked by these. Plenty of offloads. Uh, let's have a look. Kick defusals, 100 percent to 62. Tackle efficiency, brilliant. Uh, missed tackles, 24 to 33. That'll get it done. Um, errors, 7 to 13. So yeah, they just played good. <laughs> Kennedy was brilliant. Katoa was good. Ramy was good. Um, and this dude here, man, um, Val Meninga. They need to promote the hell out of this kid. And they are. He was all over Channel 9. He was everywhere. Everyone talking him up and stuff like that. I, everyone wants to grow the game in Australia. I want the game to grow in New Zealand because there's so much good rugby union talent that goes to waste there. Like, there really is. So, like, I'd love to see guys like this come over and go, damn, this is dope. Like, like all of Brisbane loves me, and I'm all over social media in Australia, and I'm the boss, you know what I mean? Like, whereas in New Zealand, you're just another rugby player trying to get a spot, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah, this this is a... 
hopefully this starts to happen more, man, because I'm sure there's plenty of dudes like this in New Zealand that have just grown up playing rugby, beast, just, you know what I mean? And just, you know, they come through and have a run at league because, man, if you're a good league player in Australia, you get, you're gored. You're gored. So that will be really good, really good watch. Re- looked really strong. Uh, just a couple of negatives. His defense was a little, that, you know what I mean? Like He actually was pretty damn good for his first game. I'm, not, I'm being hypercritical. But I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And he's, but his cover defense was just enough. So br- absolutely brilliant. Looks, I've, He looks like one of those guys you cannot tackle one-on-one. You know what I mean? He's just too, literally too strong. And um, he went up against literally the, the other, the, probably the biggest beast of a center as well. So uh, really good job. So congratulations to Val Meninga. And um, yeah, this every, everywhere else, the Ford pack was better. Um, they had them. They had their number. Tommy Gilbert was brilliant. Um, yeah, it was just just a really solid game. So congratulations, the Dolphins. Dolphins. Oh, Storm Rabbits. What a game. Um, so I said I, on my TikTok, I said I have now officially think that Rabbitohs should and are my favourites to win the comp now. And uh, here's why. So how do we win the comp? We. Finish in the top four. That's what history says. And then we have to beat three, four top teams, four, four top, four top four teams in a row. Damn. <laughs> and that's how you win the comp. That's what you have to do. So, for example, what, um, Panthers last year were the only team that consistently beat top four teams. And they went on to win the comp as the year before. Uh, Parramatta, for example, last year and the year, few, last few years, they could literally beat every team in the comp. In fact, they did beat every top team in the comp last year. Struggled to do it back to back to back. You know what I mean? It's, it, this week, the Panthers have just hit the, the trifecta. They've gone Storm, Broncos, Panthers. All teams were in the current, were in the top four at that point. Bang, bang, bang. Knocked them all off. So, um, for me, they're the only team that showed me they can do that this year so far. Uh, Broncos obviously had a longer win streak but they didn't um, lesser opponents sort of thing they haven't beat four top four teams in a row so yeah um, not too bad uh, I'm, I think the Rabbits are they're serious it was funny at the end of, as soon as the season finished last year I'd, I was thinking about who's going to go good next year as you do and I was like our oh, Rabbits will fall off a little bit and then as the off season went on and I saw them re-sign Cook re-sign Walker re-sign Latrell re-sign Havili re-sign I was like, damn, like, they've kept everyone. So that's obviously a sign for a good culture. You know what I mean? Like, they all could have got more money elsewhere. Um, so, and I was just like, damn. Like, I actually think they re-signed best in the off-season, even though they didn't bring new players in. And I, I was like, damn. And then they just they just grew on me. And then I'm like, damn, I actually genuinely think these guys could do it. And then, obviously, they had a few losses at the start of the year, but they had their forward pack was gone. They were missing so many players out of their forward pack, and they were just getting pumped through the middle and still winning games here and there. Now they've got their forward pack back. They're looking the goods, man. They're looking the goods. Going to be hard to beat, man. I wouldn't be betting against them too much this year. Possession, dominated. This was the thing, too. Like, they, they genuinely dominated Melbourne in this game. Like, this was a real good humping. Yeah, um, 32 sets completed for both teams. A couple of extra sets there. Um, like, pumped them through the middle. Cause they've, they've been losing this battle lately. Pumped them with post-contact. Pumped them with line breaks. Pumped them with time and possession. Less tackle breaks, but that's good. Look how slow Melbourne's play. The ball speed is... Like, that's slow for Melbourne. So, they won the ruck. Um, defense. You know, they need to tidy that up a little bit. Damn, that's good for Melbourne. 92%, god damn. Uh, a few missed tackles, obviously need to tidy up a little bit as well. But, yeah, it was just, it was brilliant, man. Penalties conceded pretty even. But, yeah, this was a, they looked like a much better football team than Melbourne in this one. It was a pretty pretty convincing win. Anyway, I thought, anyway. Um, who else we got here? Oh, let's have a little look at the team list first. So, Meany I thought was pretty good. Um, Warbrick looked like he'd been uh, told to run a bit harder. <laughs> He was running with a bit more commitment. I actually had been thinking that this year. Like, he's a beast. And he just, he gets tossed around a little bit for a big guy. Like, he'll just get, a little bit like Sevo. You're like, bro, you should bump someone off every tackle, every hit up. Um, he, he was running a lot harder. 
Remy Smith was back. It was a little bit meh. Uh, Cam Munster was as good as he could be. He got really shut down. Uh, Jerome Hughes had some moments. Nelson was okay. I actually much... I, I, I know it sounds so dumb, but I like Nelson on an edge or coming off the bench. I feel like he impacts the game so much better. When he comes on, when everyone else is tired, he is unstoppable. Um, so I don't know. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to tell uh, the master coach how to uh, run his interchanges, but uh, just... You, you don't have to be a footy expert to see when Nelson comes on the field, the game changes. You know what I'm saying? He's a, he's a monster. Um, Cam Murray was relatively quiet for his high, high standards. Uh, this is a great battle. Damian Cook and uh, Harry Grant, I was really loving that. Uh, Chitola was brilliant. He's it's one of the most underrated props in the game. Campbell Graham, brilliant. Uh, Johnson, brilliant. Luttrell, brilliant. Same usual suspects. Oh, what a game this was, man. This was... Uh, this is my wooden spooner, wooden spoon um, battle uh, sort of thing. And Tigers coming off a big win last week. Um, man, it was a, it was a pretty good game. It was, you know, like, I can say it was super high standard and I was just loving every minute of it or anything. But, um, yeah, so I actually had Tigers with a three and a half point head, no, sorry, five and a half point head start. Thank God. And, um, yeah, I didn't need the points in the end, but... It was, it was good knowing because Dragons are attacking that last few minutes. And I was like, even if, if they score a six-point six, um, six point try, six like a converted try, I still would have covered. But I was still like on the edge of my seat. And Dragons just, yeah, Buller. Man, try-saving tackle was absolutely brilliant. So um, we'll go through the team stats. This will be interesting. So, yeah, dominated possession, 29 minutes in possession to 25 minutes. Uh, 86% completion rate. They've been completing really well lately. It's been really, really good. Like They're completing better than the Roosters, than a lot of these other good teams. So um, they're, at least they're holding the ball and doing the fundamentals right. Um, uh, won the run meters just. Um, post contact, won that handily. Line breaks, 4 to 3. Tackle breaks, 43 to 39. Tom, uh, average set distance, 39 to 38. And um, damn. Both teams playing the ball really quickly, so neither team wrestling well, I guess. Um, what else we got here? 40-20s won. Um, here we go. Tackles made, 30-28. So tackles missed, 39-43. Obviously you want this a bit lower. You'd love to get that under 30 if you can, but uh, not horrendous, and you definitely don't want it over 40. Um, inefficient tackles, 10-13. to 13. Uh, They did this without Bateman as well, so... Again, you definitely want errors under 10 if you possibly can, but it happens, man. It happens. All right, so uh, this Buller kid, absolutely brilliant. Um, cannot believe it's his second game. He looks so good. Um, those basketball hands, man, he's just, he's got good hands. It was funny, he got hit. So someone did a bomb. You guys probably watched it. But um, he, he got hit. And the ball dropped, and then he just stuck his hand and just caught it. I was like, man, that is basketball hands right there. Just just gripping onto that ball. Like, he was banged, got hit, and then just snatched the ball um, after he got hit. And I was like, how did you do that? <laughs> I've literally never seen that before. Normally, you know, you have the ball and you get touched, and they drop it. He was getting hit and then grabbed it after he'd been hit. It was wild. Absolutely wild. But um, I thought Noffs was real good. Noff Loom was brilliant. Um, he'd been really good since he came back. I um, thought Wakem was pretty good. Um, Luke Brooks, one of the better games he's had in the last couple of years. Um, I th everyone said he played good last week. I think he played a little bit better this week. Um, look, maybe a little bit of confidence now. David Clemens' first stint was brilliant. Um, he was really, really good. And uh, Abby Corrissey, I was sniffing around as well. Oh, Dragons, man. I don't know what you guys are doing. And I, I hate... I don't want to seem like I'm bagging the Dragons. But I just don't know what they're doing sometimes. Now, in this game... Uh, Moses Embiid had started at 9 and then Ben Hunt went into 9. With, what time would that have been? About 25 minutes in. And then um, <coughs> Jaden Sullivan came in. Now, he looked good straight away. Like, he was like... He looked pretty damn electric straight away. Scored two tries. Looked brilliant. But then at the very end, his game management was poor and he really was probably kicked the ball dead, I think, twice. Oh, I just don't know. Um... Jack Bird back in the middle. Jack Bird had been playing so much better on an edge, and they put him back here. I just don't know what the coach is doing. 
Like the thing is, I think a lot of these guys are trying their butts off. Ravala was pretty good. Amon was okay. Ben Hunt did what he can do. Um, but yeah, it was just it's just Sewell um, so had a really good first half. Um, but yeah, it's just just weird to me, man. Like they seem to be making like they're a professional footy team and he's a professional coach. Like they seem to be making errors that people that only watch football a little bit wouldn't make. they be like if they were coaching the team. You know what I mean? Like like Zach Lomax, I, I know drop drop yeah, the goal kicking wasn't great and this and that and the other, but I, I said he's been their second best player. Someone said, nah, Blake Laurie has been. I'm like, yeah, maybe and then someone said, Well, Jack Bird's probably been I'm like, Oh, he's only played two good games. And then, you know what I mean? So like but even so, like they dropped their third, fourth best player. I don't know. And then this edge looked weak. It was just it was just weird to me, man. I didn't I didn't understand what they were doing. Like they changed all the good stuff that was working and then mucked around with it and lost to the Tigers and now they're genuinely in a wooden spoon battle. Um sort of thing so here were they both sitting they both got six points both had a buy so both had two wins uh, yeah not looking good for the old D-rags um, yeah it could get nasty this could get nasty um, yeah I'll have to wait and see where we're doing but uh, shining lights though Ravalar I thought looked pretty good saw they looked dangerous whenever they went his way but they went the wrong way a lot of the times to Bell and a prop, I don't know, a bit one-dimensional. Blake Laurie's trying his backside off and playing way better than I thought he could. Um, but yeah, it was just I'm not not. I was about to say disappointing from the Dragons. I don't. I think they're doing the best they can. I just. I don't know if it's coaching, culture, whatever it is, but it's just there's something off there, man. And uh, hopefully they can pull their fingers out. All right, Cowboys Roosters. This was the last leg in my hundred k multi. So if the Roosters won this, I would have won eight grand. And then a pissed down rain, like pissed down rain, and um, yeah. <laughs> but I literally, I said in my TikTok video, I said, "Man, of course the 2022 Cowboys come out and play for the, play play well in this game." They, this is the first time the Cowboys looked like they did last year. Now I said as well in my last video, I felt like the Roosters, like whenever it's pouring rain. I think you need two genuine halves in your halves. Like, Joey Manu isn't a genuine half. He's a, you know, like, edge center, wing, if you wanted, full back. You could probably put him in the lock or second. But he's not a genuine six or seven. So, I think if, if Walker plays this game, I, I'm not saying they would have won, but they probably would have won. <laughs> like, just two genuine halves. And then you have Joey out on an edge running a mark one-on-one. -on -one. I think they win this game. Joey tried a few things, but it's, it doesn't matter how good you are, man. If there's three blokes on you because you're in the middle of the park, you can't really do much, can you? Like, there's a reason why most tries are scored on an edge. <laughs> it's hard to run through the middle when there's four blokes literally standing in front of you. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it was a tough one, man. This was a... But to, to be honest, you know, I had a long time to get over it because I was... About 15 minutes into this game, the score was 6-0 at this point. Cowboys up, and I knew the Roosters were going to win. I could just I could just tell it wasn't going to work. They just, yeah. I was just like, I was just praying something something happened, like a send-off or a something, because I, I just I knew the Cowboys were going to win. They just, they played so much better wet, wet weather footy. Um, so I don't know if it was, yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah, they should have. They should have. If they knew it was going to rain this Arbo, and I don't even know if they did. I don't know if Sam Walker was even on the team list at all, or whether he played New South Wales Cup. It doesn't say there, but um, but yeah, he, he, that was a that was a big boo boo, man. That was Manu was never going to be able to do what you needed him to do in the middle of the field this time. So um, anyway, so let's have a look. Um, time possession plenty. Um, I mean, look. Cowboys weren't perfect either. Like this is the thing, like seventy five percent. But what is with Roosters just having the worst, absolute worst completion rates? Like Jesus Christ, man! They got some of the best. They got it's stacked with state of origin international and quite Kiwi international players. Like what is going on? Got pumped through the middle. Pumping post. Well, not really pumping post contact, but it was it three line breaks to one. 
So they actually won the line break battle. They won the tucker break battle. You know what I mean? It's just they've got to hold on to this form. They, I'm just I'm just guessing now, but I'm just doing like videos like this every week. I think this is the third or fourth time they've completed in the 60s. Well, that's not good enough, man. That's not good enough. You're not going to beat many teams doing that. Um, but yeah, this is a play the balls with sharp. But yeah, it's just let's have a look at the errors. 17 to all that. But like this, Cowboys made plenty. Like I said, you want this under 10, but 17 is just not good enough. That's terrible. Penalties conceded three to five. Um, let's have a look at the team. Tedesco was restricted. <laughs> When you when you rely on footwork and it's literally torrential rain, it's going to happen. Scotty Drinkwater definitely looked a little more comfortable in the wet, but um, yeah, he was pretty good. Felt was okay. Val Holmes did some brilliant things, and he had a couple shockers as well. Hiku, much better game. Talalungi, much better game. Dearden, Dearden, much better game. Um, Chatty Townsend was better too. Um, Reese Robson actually had a pretty good... Hess was brilliant. Hess was brilliant. Um... And I thought Cotter probably played the best game of the year too. Um, big error at the end of the game. But, well, not at the end, with about 20 minutes to go, which sort of gave the Roosters a little bit of a sniff, but it didn't matter anyway. I thought Granville was pretty damn solid as well. So, um, But I I was just waiting. I was like, oh, man, oh, this game will stay pretty... It was 6 all. No, sorry, 6 nil to the Cowboys. And I'm like... like <laughs> I'm looking at the in-change, Mike. Angus, Tupanua and Hargreaves are about to come on. I'm like, they're going to blow them off the park. And then just like, it just never happened. And, and then after these guys were on the park for about five minutes, I was like, they're going to lose this game. <laughs> they're going to lose this game. But anyway, what do you do? Um, and Victor Radley held quiet. Egan Butcher went off with a HIA early. Um, yeah. And clear, uh, Kiri was pretty good, but nothing too crazy. But yeah, Joey Manu, it's just, I don't think, like, I'm one of those. I want him to touch the ball as much as he can. And he's going to touch the ball more there than 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 what uh, four or three, but I just I don't know. I think Kiri's a better six as well, and yeah, mm. me how I'd have it. I I'd put Walker back in, Swali back out on a on the wing. Like I don't know what this center thing was all about. Does anyone know what it was about? But. Did anyone else see Suwali's highlight reels from last year? I don't know if there is a highlight reel this year. Like, he, he probably had the best highlight reel of last year on the wing. He gets put in centre. And I can't think of anything he's done where that would make a highlight reel. Just my thoughts. I'd much rather have Joey in the centres and him on, on the wing, but... How's me telling all the best coaches in the league what they should be doing? Hey, eh? <laughs> listen here, Robson. I'm gonna start telling Wayne Bennett what to do soon. <sighs> listen up, mate. No, he's a, he's one coach this year. It's not a genius sport. Like, you, if you if you're not a, you know, like, and coaches make mistakes. You know what I'm saying? But, um, yeah, so you can pick with that. But Wayne Bennett this year, you can't say he's done a damn thing wrong. <laughs> everything so right <laughs> I'm like you fucking underestimate that dude so hard alright this game right here this was an odd game and this game obviously just finished but Parramatta flew out the blocks scored a try so easily in like the first minute yeah, it was literally the first minute there you go and I was like oh they're on here it's Parramatta pretty good in the wet pretty good wet weather team and um and then Gutho gets Simba, yeah, I was about to say the seventh minute. And then it was just try, try. And that really was the game, if you break it down. These two tries don't get scored. You know what I mean? Parramatta aren't chasing them then, and they probably could go on and win this. Um, but I'm going to guess and say that Parramatta won most stats in this game when we go to team stats in a minute. Just just from watching the game, I genuinely... From Clint Guth's just before, prior to Gutherson getting Simbin, then for about five, ten minutes after, for maybe five minutes after Clint got Simbin, Titans were the better team. But I feel like the overall, I thought Parramatta were genuinely better and looked better, and the stats might back me up here. Hopefully they don't make me look stupid here. Okay, so they won possession, one time in possession. Didn't win the completion rate, so I didn't think they'd win that stat. I meant more these stats. Yeah, here we go. 
all run meters, yeah. They ran for a kilometer again, mm -hmm. only 1,500 from them. Remember, they got a follow waker Antino in their team. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Look how hard they dominated the post-contact meters. Won the line breaks. Didn't win a lot of tackle breaks. Um, average set distance, 57 meters. That's massive. Parramatta's forwards are for real, man. They are for real. That is absurd. That is absurd. And for 10 minutes, they'll down a player. That is ridiculous. I've never seen it that high before, ever. And they've got... A, <laughs> again, they have Tino and Fuller Waker in their team, man. That's crazy. They're crazy, crazy. They won the offloads, won the receipts, um, total passes, um, tackles made... Uh, missed tackle. Whoa. I, yeah, they had plenty of missed tackles. So, yeah, definitely uh, Titans won that. That's really good from the Titans. Um, ineffective tackles, 14 to 27. Um, errors, 6 each. Penalties conceded, 3 to 7. Uh, yeah, Parramatta just... There was two or three times where Parramatta really looked like they were getting on top and then they'd give a penalty away. It was like... You know, there's some penalties and it's sort of like, oh, whatever. Every single Parramatta penalty came at a bad time. It was like the fourth tackle or when they weren't going anywhere. It was just one of those ones where you're like, bro, why did you give that? Like, I mean, they were, they were penalties. I'm not saying they weren't penalties. It was just like, what are you doing? Like, a penalty could not have come at a worse time and you've given a penalty. It's just, it was terrible. Um, big news out of this one too. Mitchell Moses got knocked out. Well, not... He was, he was motionless on the ground for a second, but um, but yeah, it was um, he's going to miss eleven days. So let's have a look who Parramatta's got next week quickly. Um, Raiders, I believe. So on the Saturday, so short turnaround. Oh, and then they've got a Friday game. They might miss that too. Is that is that eleven days? No, no. That, he'll just be able to play the Rabbitohs. <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> oh God damn. That is 11 days, right? So what's today? The 7th. No, it's not, is it? Oh, yeah, it is. It is. 18th, the day before. So Mitchell Moses is only just allowed to play this game because of the short turnarounds. Wow. Jeez, I got lucky there. Um, all right, so where were we? Um, back here. Ooh. All right, so... Right, let's go through the players. J Jaden Campbell, probably the best game I've seen him play. He was brilliant. F flying high for takes. He was so damn good. Um, Clint was pretty damn good besides his sin bin. Um, Mick Acevo was solid. Panasini was good. Bailey Simonson and Dunster were okay. Dylan Brown was some of the best. Probably the best game I've ever seen him play. The commentator said this. I didn't. The commentator said, I think this is the best performance of Magic Round. And of, from, saying from Dylan Brown. That was Vossi saying that. And I didn't think it at the time, but I thought about it. I'm like, you might be right. He was everywhere. Like, he, I was blown away at his... Uh, I can't, don't think I can scroll across on the stats here, but... No, I can't. I can only do it on my other laptop. Um, but yeah, he was... I'd love to see how many... <laughs> all these uh, setups and try assists and all that sort of stuff. He was he was on one. Like he was on one. Um, let's go back to the team list. But yeah, so Dylan Brown. He's obviously with Mitch Moses being out next week. Um, he's got to really take the reins. Mitch Moses was out for a few games last year, and I thought Dylan. Br that's when everyone was like, "Oh, Dylan Brown's for real." Was when Moses was out. And I, I do feel like sometimes, sometimes, they play through Moses a little bit too much. Like, Moses is the older statesman. He's, you know, he's this, he's the, you know, all that sort of stuff. But I feel like sometimes, like, I feel like Melbourne do it real good. Like, you know what I mean? Like, just, you know, it's like, not your turn, my turn. Just like, oh, like, things aren't quite working for me. Instead of me trying to play through it, let's give Dill Bags a little bit more ball and see what he can do with it. You know what I mean? Just like... I feel like Parramatta don't, um, they don't rotate who's going to be the, like, I feel like it's just like almost always Moses. And then they'll go, oh, you try one now, deal. And if it doesn't come off, then they go back to Moses. And they keep going back to Moses. And they go, oh, try again now, deal. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, try again, Moses. You know what I mean? Whereas I feel like, because you need, when, when you're a half, especially, you need, sometimes you need to read, fuck. <laughs> My lighting fell down. Oh, that's hilarious. And I'm back. 
<laughs> I bloody moved my, got new lighting and put it up and it, uh, I just wheeled over the cord and <laughs> it fell on me. Um, I feel like, um, yeah, I feel like, yeah, they do that bit. Too. So when you're reading defense, so like you get the ball out the back and then you look and then you might do something and you go, oh, okay, that's how they defended it. All right, cool. So next time I'll do this. And, that, and sometimes you need two or three attempts before you can sort of crack the defence. And I feel Dill gets one attempt and then they go back out of Moses a lot more. So, um, yeah, that's what I'd like to see a little bit more because when, when Moses was out and they, they were going Dill, 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 he mightn't crack him first, second, but he would the third or the fourth or the fifth, whenever he would eventually get what he wanted. And um, I think that's what they need to do a little bit more is give Dill a few cracks before you start just shifting to Moses all the time. Um, because he's, he's special, man. He's special. I thought Wiramu Greg again, he's he's getting better every week. He's been he's been absolutely brilliant. Um, you know what I mean? He big tackles, big shots, you know what I mean? He looks fitter, like it looks like he's you know, he's playing bigger minutes now, obviously with R C G out. Um yeah, so really, really good. And I'll tell you now, this dude here, for the waker. I don't know if he's from New South Wales or Queensland, but I heard them say he's in origin form. I'm telling you, bro, he's in origin form. So that's twice now. Twice. where he So he played with Payne Haas, Flegler, Tino on the field, and he was the best prop in the game. This one had Wiram Greg. I know he's a new prop, but damn solid prop. <laughs> Junior Paulo and Tino on the team. And I think he was the best again. Like, he was, he's so good, man. He's so good. Um, I'm, I'm actually barely knew who he was last. You know what I mean? Like I was like, oh yeah, the follow wake. I know the name, sort of know the face, but he's he's becoming the form prop of the comp at the moment. He's brilliant. He's so damn good. I thought Aaron Clark came on and showed a little bit of energy. Um, and it, uh, and Dave Feeder was really good as well. Um, but yeah, really. And Kieran four on two tries, absolutely murking it. Um. And <laughs> Jaden Campbell, man, he just looks like 14. He's so good. He's so good. I love the kid, man. He did something in this game with a little jank, and I was like, damn, that was Preston, man. Like, I got a shockwave back and was like, that was Preston Campbell, man. Like, it was so cool to see that last name. Again, um, absolutely brilliant. Huge Preston fan, and um, good to see the young fella. And he's just too good to not be playing full-time footy, too. He's just... Actually, you know what? He's not just yet. Like, he's... I have no problem with it. He's a small body. I have no problem with this kid doing his apprenticeship, to be honest. Like, everyone keeps saying, oh, he needs to leave. He needs to go somewhere else. He's too good to be playing. And it, I, I believe he is, he is, like, probably too talented to be sitting on a bench. But at the same time, man, like, do your apprenticeship, grow into your body, get into the gym, you know, learn your craft and extend the length of your career... One than getting like he got he got bashed a few times today, and um, he's tough, but you know what I mean. You don't want to ruin this kid's career, um, or you know what I mean. You don't want him doing because it's a tough physical. Like it's the the fullbacks are asked to do a lot more physical stuff now. It's not all the pretty stuff like it. Like back in the day, a lot of the fullbacks were like Preston Campbell's. You know his dad's size, and it was fine. Like they didn't get roughed around too much. I'd sort of run. You know what I mean? Run around and sort of try and skip around and they'd get dragged to the ground and stuff like this. Now it's like run into the line, bro, and make as many metres as you possibly can while you're doing it. You know what I mean? Like the game generally, like it was, small fullbacks were super common back in the day. Now they're built. Like you look at, you know what I mean? Like Turbo and, you know, Luttrell and even um, Edwards and Teddy. Like their, their legs are, like they're big. You know what I mean? Like they're big bodies, man. Like... Like, Tedesco's ass cheeks barely fit in his shorts. You know what I mean? Like, he's... <laughs> they're big, man. And then the wingers are built as well. So, it's not really a small man's position anymore. But um, he definitely wants to work that fine balance. So, he doesn't want to get too big and lose that edge. So, But I think a few kegs on that frame will help him out a lot and um, help him out in that spot. And Yeah, so I, I think he's too talented to not have a full-time spot. But I don't have any problems with him getting slowly blooded into the NRL. Um, and yeah, so that that's it. Damn, we're, we're here already. We're here already. All right, who we got next week? Let's have a quick little look at next week's games. Um, Storm Broncos. Stop it. Bulldogs, Waz. Oh, poor old Warriors having to come back to bloody Australia. 
Um, I'll tell you what, man. Someone floated the idea that I should, Warriors should have got to play every single game except for Magic Round in New Zealand this year. For having to play every single game, every team should have had to travel to them just to give them a real leg up. You know what I'm saying? Um, get them, give them a, you know, like, like a thanks for being legends. You know what I mean? Not sooking. Like they could have easily sat out and gone. If we can't go home and travel back, we're not we're not competing this year. Buggies, and they didn't. They just lived out of suitcases for two years and got on with it. So, good work uh, from the Waz, and um, just sort of sucks. Like they've done a lot of traveling the last month or two, man. I really hope they don't burn out. Panthers, Roosters, oh, Raiders, Eels. This should be a pretty good game too. Real getting. Parramatta have had a few like, oh, they really need to win this one games. Not like must win, but they really need to. Raiders flying high, three or four on the trot. Um, both teams love to let in a try and two. This could be a cracker. That could be game of the round. Uh, Knights, Titans. Oh, man. Titans might slaughter them here. Um, depends. Everyone will have a nice 10 at least coming back from Bali. Um, Seagull, Sharkies. Sharkies might bounce back from that one too, so that should be a cracker. And we kick off on Thursday. How good. All right, that's it, guys. We're all done. Thank you all so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.